the iconic moments of that life. This was the time in February 1990 when Nelson Mandela walked out of prison after 27 years. A huge reaction on social media in the last 24 hours. We'll look at the millions of tweets and Facebook posts inspired by an extraordinary life. And welcome to our continuing coverage of the death of Nelson Mandela as tributes are paid and memories shared of a man who meant so much not just to South Africa but to people in many nations. Once the world's most famous political prisoner, he walked to freedom and began building a new non-racial South Africa. Today, his example of forgiveness and leadership is being remembered and celebrated. We'll be showing you what it's like in Soweto today and also outside Mr. Mandela's Johannesburg home and sharing the many statements made by public figures. Here's just one, the former US Secretary of State Colin Powell saying he was saddened at the news, but just for a moment, because this was a life well lived. Let's join Karen Giannone now in Soweto. Well, here in Soweto, it has been a rather surprising scene, if you like, because everybody who's gathering here today seems to have a smile on their face. And when I ask her why is their celebratory mood, they say we are celebrating Tata Madiba's life, as he's known. They're celebrating the achievements in such a long life of 95 years. And bit by bit, the crowd here in Villa Kazi Street, outside where the former president's former home is, which is now a museum, the crowd is getting bigger and bigger by the minute. It's a beautiful evening, as you can see here in Soweto. The cloud of the afternoon has passed, but uh, there is a somberness in the sense that they are very sad. He has slipped away after so long, but uh, the celebrations have been uh, building up. We've heard a lot of singing. There's been dancing, chanting, and pictures of uh, Mandela have been held in the air. Mike Woldridge has this look back at the day so far in Soweto. Many have chosen to pay their homage to Nelson Mandela here, outside his home in the Johannesburg suburb of Houghton, in truly South African style. This leafy, normally quiet residential area was used to having the prisoner turned president, more recently the world's most revered elder statesman, in its midst. But today, with Nelson Mandela no longer among Houghton's people, it was so different. This place and those who flocked here have set the national mood of mourning. Now it's a sad day in South Africa, I must say. Um, we've lost, you know, we've lost a great um, role model. We, we've really, but I think the greatest thing is that at least his legacy, you know, will live on. It's a pretty sad day. I mean, we we're lucky to be in an era where there's been such a great man who had so much forgiveness and compassion. His death came very late in the evening here, but South Africans awoke to newspaper headlines and front pages that sought to do justice to this painful watershed time in the history of the nation. President Jacob Zuma announced what he called the moment of our deepest sorrow. Our nation has lost its greatest son. Our people have lost a father. Although we knew that this day would come. Nothing can diminish our sense of a profound and enduring loss. South Africa appears to be unifying in sorrow, in itself a reflection of the reconciliation that Nelson Mandela sought so hard to bring about in this nation where racial division was more entrenched and institutionalized than any other. There has been remarkable change in places like Soweto, but it is a goal yet to be fully achieved. Give hope to the world. Nelson Mandela's fellow Nobel Peace Laureate, Archbishop Desmond Tutu, led a service of thanks in Cape Town's St. George's Cathedral, so often a focus for protest and mourning during the days of apartheid. 
God, thank you for the gift of Madiba. Thank you for what he has enabled us to know we can become. And from the last white president, F.W. de Klerk, the man who freed Nelson Mandela in 1990 and negotiated often tortuously the new South Africa with him, this tribute. He was a great man. He was a very special man. I think his greatest legacy to South Africa and to the world is the emphasis which he has always put on the need for reconciliation. Many mourning publicly today speak of celebrating the life of a legend, but of a very personal loss too, especially those who believed he brought them chances in life they'd been denied and thought they might never have. South Africa will now discover the influence of his legacy rather than of his physical presence, which seemed to offer hope to so many, however little they'd actually seen of him in the final years of his life. Well, it was President Jacob Zuma of South Africa who announced, as we saw there in Mike's report, the death of Nelson Mandela to the nation late last night after the news that Mr. Mandela had passed away at around 8.50 p.m. local time. We heard from President Zuma a short while ago. A few hours ago, he gave a news conference. We know that Mr. Mandela's body is currently in the military hospital in Pretoria. After that, it will lie in state. And we had an announcement from Mr. Zuma that the funeral will take place on Sunday, the 15th of December. Once again, we thank all South Africans for the dignity, respect, and the support that has been provided to the Mandela family from the period of Madiba's illness to his eventual passing. The outpouring love that you experienced locally and abroad was unprecedented. It demonstrates the caliber of a leader that Madiba was. Well, as you can imagine, when a figure of the stature of Nelson Mandela dies, the reaction from the around the world is immense. So many world leaders are giving their response over traditional media and social media. Bridget Kendall, our diplomatic correspondent, reports on the response from the world. In Trafalgar Square in London this morning, the flag on South Africa House was at half-mast. Down below, the messages, flowers and other tributes were beginning to pile up passers-by quietly adding their tokens. Among the mourners who came to sign the Book of Condolence, David Cameron. The abiding memory I have is just seeing him in um, Johannesburg and him talking about the people who had imprisoned him uh, and the suffering he'd undergone, and yet his complete forgiveness, his total lack of malice towards those who had done this to him, Across the Atlantic, where news of Nelson Mandela's death came after darkness, the American flag was also raised to half-mast on the White House, and President Obama made a heartfelt tribute, which was deeply personal. I am one of the countless millions who drew inspiration from Nelson Mandela's life. My very first political action, the first thing I ever did that involved an issue or a policy or politics, was a protest against apartheid. And in New York, the passing of a great leader was mourned both in Times Square and at the United Nations, where diplomats in the Security Council paused in silent tribute. Across the globe, messages from world leaders have poured in. China's president recalled Mandela's friendship with China. India's prime minister lamented the passing of a giant among men. Russia's president, 
called him an outstanding politician, and Brazil's president mourned one of the greatest figures of the 20th century. A torrent of tributes also came from African leaders. We will all miss the most cherished of Africa's sons and a true African hero. President, Nelson's Man President Nelson Mandela lived an extraordinary life in a very ordinary way. The Queen said she remembered her meetings with Mr. Mandela with great warmth and was deeply saddened. Prince Charles, who took him round Brixton, recalled his humour and his courage. He seemed to have touched everyone who met him. Former US President Bill Clinton said he'd lost a true friend. Former British Prime Minister Tony Blair praised him as a great man who'd made racism not just immoral, but stupid. And South African actress Charlize Theron said though Mandela would be missed, his impact would live forever. By chance, last night was the London premiere of the new film of his life, the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge in attendance, and visibly shocked afterwards when the news of his death was announced. We're just reminded of what an extraordinary and inspiring man Nelson Mandela was, um, and my thoughts and prayers are with him and his family right now. Thank you. More members of the royal family were at South Africa House this morning for a towering figure whose impact on the world has surely been monumental. Bridget Kendall, BBC News. Well, as you can hear and probably see around me, there are many people arriving to the scene of Mr Mandela's former home. Uh, a couple of the people who've come to the scene, uh, Kesi Borne and Kamugelo, uh, mother and daughter. And you grew up just a couple of streets away, Kesi Borne. Yes, my grandfather lives a couple of streets away from here. I've since moved out of this neighborhood, but for me, I was born in 1976 in Soweto. So I guess the struggle against apartheid was always going to be a big part of my life. So a day like this, when uh, Nelson Mandela uh, passes away, is highly emotional in the sense that when I was born, my mother did not have half the freedoms that I enjoy actually any of the freedoms that I enjoy today and I've been able to have a career, um, live wherever I want, have my children go, um, you know, play wherever they want, go to school wherever they want and I think for me that's a legacy of uh, Nelson Mandela that he wanted everyone to have that equal treatment, equal opportunity to be able to um, achieve your potential. So I think I'm, I'm really um, hoping that we will always honor um, the values that he taught us. I think the biggest lesson we can learn from him is that you can be um, uh, the change that you want to see in the world. You can actually make a huge difference, even as a single person. And Kamugelo, how does your perspective differ? You're 20, I think. I mean, do you still feel that this has, what your mom's saying, has big relevance to you? Definitely. I can go to any school that I want to go to. I can be free. Um, as a young South African, it means so much to me and I really appreciate what he has done for us and the legacy that he has left. What about the, 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 grief, the grieving and the grief? I mean, how are people dealing with it differently? We've seen a lot of celebrating of Nelson Mandela's life. Just explain the sort of balance that there is. I'm quite sad. And I'm sad because... I think this is a, a turning point in our country. I think to have a real life example of how to not just talk about reconciliation and respect for humanity and upholding uh, of human rights, but to actually live it and walk it was a huge inspiration. And I think even as a black woman, that notion of equality permeates everything that we do today in South Africa. I think this is probably the only country or one of the few countries where in boardroom meetings, the fact that there are no women is openly um, uh, discouraged. Uh, so discussions, open discussions are had about the fact that business needs to have gender uh, balance 
um, the fact that politics need to have gender balance. So I'm sad. Um, but at the same time, I think I will carry on fighting for, for, for those um, uh, uh, values of equality. Kamagelo nodding her head there. You were just a baby when Nelson Mandela came to power. Kamagelo, Kisibore and Kamagelo, thank you so much. And uh, as you can see, there are more and more people arriving all the time. It uh, is a really extraordinary scene here in Soweto outside the former house of Nelson Mandela. But now it's back to the studio.